Cenk, as a lot of people know, I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan. Now that guy, Michigan basketball coach Jawan Howard is one of my favorite coaches. Um, all of us at the University of Michigan like to believe that our university is one of the greatest in the world on the court and off, that we stand for excellence, integrity, and accountability. But today, we're having some questions because of a fight that Jawan Howard had last night with the head coach at of Wisconsin. The game was in Wisconsin at Madison. I was watching the game and I thought, oh, Wisconsin's playing kind of chippy. A couple cheap shots here and there, a couple elbows to a Michigan center that were not called, that weren't called for. And so a lot of tensions in the game. And then the game ends. Um, towards the end, Wisconsin calls a timeout with uh, 15 seconds, and they call another timeout with four seconds, even though they were up by 15 points. That seemed a little bit rude. Well, there they are in the handshake line, Michigan's players and Wisconsin players and the coaches starting to shake hands. Um, and then there were some there were some heated words, and there you can see that is Michigan head coach Jawan Howard, tall there, uh, uh, sort of towards the right, the, the man with the black sweater is the Wisconsin head coach, Greg uh, Gard. Uh, Howard's walking off the court, but guard grabs onto him. And then Howard looks like he's trying to get past guard. Guard won't move, and so Howard grabs guard's shirt. The conversation gets really heated. Heated. People don't get uh, people get between Howard and guard. However, uh, Howard appears to be saying, "Don't blanking touch me. Don't blanking touch me." Guard leaves the fray as an assistant coach, Krabenhoff enters. It looks like Krabenhoff, who used to play for Wisconsin, was something of, a, of an attacker, is yelling at Howard, but there's no audio of what he's saying. Howard hits Krabenhoff with his open right hand, more of a slap than a punch, and then all hell breaks loose as players from both teams enter the fray. Punches are thrown, but the brawl is broken up before too long. Hmm. Well, here's how the coaches respond to this incident. First, Juwan Howard, the head coach of Michigan, he wrote on Twitter, that was very uncalled for for him to touch me as we were verbalizing and communicating with one another. So that's what ended up happening, and that's what escalated it. Greg Gard, the Wisconsin coach said, well, apparently he, Howard, didn't like that I called a timeout to reset the 10 second call. He did not like that when he came through the handshake line, so I'll leave it at that, and the tape will show the rest. Of course, Howard has received much of the blame for what seemed to be something of a fight or a melee. Travis Wilson writes, Jawan Howard played a long time in the NBA. He knew exactly what he was doing, starting an NBA fight by slapping at a guy with four people in between them, then running away while everyone else got into it. But others are pointing out that Greg Gard got physical with Jawan Howard first. This is Bundrich on Twitter. Y'all not gonna get on here and pretend not to see the white man grab Jawan Howard like he was a child be scolded. He didn't want to shake dude's hand, and he grabbed Juwan's arm. Do whatever you want, except put your hands on me. So here's the question. Yes, I'm going to agree right off the bat. Juwan Howard should not have punched the guy, slapped the guy. He was just a, some jackass of a Wisconsin assistant coach. He was a troublemaker. Juwan Howard should not have put his own career in jeopardy to fight with a Wisconsin assistant coach. But having said that, I guess the question is now what about accountability? Because there have been some other incidents in the past where people have gotten in some trouble. And by the way, let's go back to one more tweet. Read Jawan Howard's lips. He said, don't touch me, don't flip and touch me. I counted six times and he got touched. Sorry, but that's a fair warning in my book, case closed. So again, should Jawan Howard face any consequences? And as I said, it's not the first time a coach has acted up on the court. I remember a time back in 1984, 1985 basketball season when IU head coach in Bloomington, Bobby Knight. Well, he threw a chair in the middle of a game against Purdue. Knight was mad at the officiating. Knight later claimed that he heard an old lady in the far side of the court saying, Bobby, I can't find a place to sit. And then he just threw the chair. Well, no, he wasn't doing that. He was doing it because he was angry. Well, in 2016, Jack, you interviewed Meta World Peace about a number of topics, including his role in the infamous Malice at the Palace brawl of 2004. Here's what Meta World Peace had to say. I was very unbalanced at a point in my career when I got into the NBA. I got, I got defensive player of the year, 2003, I averaged 18 points. Next year, I wanted to get MVP. I was still the best defender in the league. I was averaging 25 points. And the year before that, I, finished, I think I finished sixth for MVP. So I said, okay, you know, I'm gonna get MVP this year, and I was on my way. But as my career was going up and my skills, mentally and emotionally, I was going the opposite directions. Um, even without the brawl, which wasn't all my fault, somebody initiated. No, I know, I know. Somebody initiated the, the action with me, and I just finished it. But most people think I started it, which I didn't. Somebody hit me first, and I went to hit that person back. But even without that brawl, I was still going downwards, like my life was spiraling out of control. You know, um, no balance. And then as you get older, it's like, okay, do I stay this person? Do I continue to feel like everybody hates me? Or do I just find myself? And that's what I did. Took parenting class, um, counseling, 
um, marriage counseling, anger management counseling, and I continue to say, okay, I'm getting to be that person that I always wanted to be. Mm. Counseling, well, that's um, a good step. But Jenk, uh, I mean, there's some suggestion that Jawan Howard, the head coach of Michigan, should now undergo some sort of anger management counseling. It's likely that he'll be suspended for a game, maybe the rest of the season by the Michigan administration or the Big Ten. What do you think should happen to him? Yeah, so this is a tough one. Um, and uh, obviously, there's also some racial components uh, to how people are perceiving this and to perhaps what happened. And I, I want to say that it's possible that the answer is both. Uh, so what do I mean by both? That there could be a racial component in how people are viewing it, and Joan Howard could be wrong at the same time. So, um, so I watched that tape about four times. We can't show it to you because of copyright reasons. Uh, the uh, the the fight basically between Howard and Guard in uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, and so there's no question that Guard touches him first. Um, so and. He shouldn't have done that. Are people focusing on that? No. Uh, a lot of African Americans are focusing on that. General mainstream media is not focusing on that. I looked through many articles. Do people mention it? Yes, they now mention it. But uh, there's almost no talk of should Greg Gard be in a lot of trouble. Uh, in fact, I haven't seen any of that. Maybe there's some in sports talk, but I haven't seen it. It's it's rare. Um, so uh, and part of the reason we played you that Ron Artest clip, he changed his name to Metal World Peace. Is because these situations are complicated. Uh, as Meta explained there, he's like, look, I was going through some issues and I needed some anger management. But at the same time, it was somebody else that started the malice in, in the palace and he got all of the blame. So, do people, was that partly because he went in the stands? Of course it was, right? In this case, was it because Jawan Howard slapped the assistant coach? Of course it was. But is it also how you perceive things? Yes, because. Um, David, when I remembered the Bobby Knight incident in Indiana, I remember, yeah, of course, people were criticizing him and it was a bridge too far to throw the chair. But generally speaking, he was perceived as one of those, you know, it almost like the old Dukes of Hazard song, just a good old boy, right? And I never mean it no harm. And so, and there's a character in a sitcom that my family watches, Young Sheldon, and he's an irascible old white coach too. It's just a little league baseball coach, but it's kind of part of his charm that he's irascible and and quick to anger, right? And that's a it's a typecast in in American culture. And when you put it as a white person, it seems like ah, he's never meaning no harm, right? When you have a, a black man who does that, it's almost never perceived that way. It's perceived as, oh, there's a black man being violent and aggressive, and there should be severe uh, consequences. So th that's I, my take on it. Yeah, go ahead. I, and I love that take, Jen, because again, there is for people like Bobby Knight or the people who are defenders of John Howard, John Howard would say. There was Bobby Knight standing up for the integrity of the game. He wanted clean officiating. There was Jawan Howard standing up for the protection of his own players. He didn't want his players attacked by an assistant coach. Jawan, if he didn't want to shake somebody's hand, doesn't want another coach grabbing him. And so Jawan Howard is protecting himself and protecting his players. And and I I I, I agree, but I also agree that. Juwan Howard and the Michigan players are, are better than this. And there's got to be some, I suppose, accountability for okay. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have hit somebody. You just can't slap somebody as much as look. When I, when I first saw this last night, I, the first thing I tweeted and I later deleted it was, you know what? Given the game that I had just seen and how horrible Wisconsin had been towards Michigan, I wish that Juwan. I wrote my tweet. I wish that Juwan Howard had used a closed fist instead of a slap. Also knowing that that assistant coach and what a jackass he is. And I deleted because I realized, well, that's that's stupid. And you can't be advocating violence under any circumstances. But you get how passionate we all are about some of these situations. So yeah, anyway. and and look, let's as you clarified in the meeting, you're a little bit biased because yeah. uh, you're a Michigan fan and you're a Jawan Howard fan. Um, but I, I'm not biased, and I can tell you, look, Jawan Howard also got in an altercation last year in a game with yep. Minnesota. So this is a couple of times it's happened, and for his own benefit, he should look into some form of anger management. And as a guy who often gets angry on air, at least, I can tell you that it's real, right? And look, I don't have that problem in real life, although some right wingers might disagree. Um, but but earlier in my life, I did, right? Uh, and it's it's most counterproductive to yourself, right? 
Um, but in terms of what should happen, there's gotta be some sort of uh, consequences for Jawan Howard because then the players started fighting. And that's why you can't have the coach doing that because it's gonna devolve and it did. And now you got the players in trouble and that could affect their careers, that could affect their lives. It's just a terrible idea overall. But I also think there should be consequences and I think less so because it was a less violent action. But for Greg Gard for starting the touching in the first place, which he shouldn't have done. I don't know what the assistant coach said. If he said something innocuous, then then no, there should be no consequences to him. If he says something outrageous, that maybe that's a different situation. Yes, then CAA has to get this under control, but at the same time, it should not be disproportionate based on old biases and stereotypes. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.